Welcome to Out of the Rough. My name is Fred Arnold. And in this show, we're going to highlight opportunities and solutions to help get you out of the rough and into success, both personally and professionally. In these tough economic times, we want to bring to you practical solutions to many of life's challenges. And today we have Ed Masterson. Ed Masterson's a friend of the Santa Cruz Valley, a member of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, past chair of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, interim director. When they had some challenging times, you filled in to help them uh, get through those times. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Fred. Thanks and for now me. you're working for SOS Entertainment. And it's kind of neat what you do because you help bring entertainment to the business that's, that's trying to do something special for their customers or their clients or, or their group. Yeah, we help out a lot. I mean, a big part of our business is corporate um, audiovisual services. So anytime a corporate group is doing a presentation or a seminar or a conference, we provide that type of service, screens, projectors, sound systems, that kind of thing. We also work with a lot of the nonprofit organizations here in town, as you know, a lot of the uh, organizations like Boys and Girls Club, Michael Hofflin Foundation, et cetera, to help take their events and make them as spectacular as they envision them to be at the best possible price for the type of equipment that they need to do those things. And then we work with smaller companies also from time to time that just need small bits and pieces of the bigger things that we do. They might need a sound system for a typical event. Maybe sometimes we do a birthday party or a special celebration at a company for things they're doing. So we're, we're kind of out there. We do everything from super simple to very elaborate. So Let's talk about um, charities, because I know charities, you're involved in the Michael Hoffman Board, Advisory Board, um, also SCV, is it Youth Project? Youth Project. Youth Project. Mm -hmm. right. And so when it comes to these events, there's an expectation for it to be uh, at a certain level, right. simply because it's they want to outdo last year's event, plus they're trying to raise as many dollars as possible. Right. And who needs another event that's, oh, I got to uh, drag my wife to an event she's going to be bored at? So they are really productions, aren't they? They are. You put a lot of pressure on us now not to make those events boring. No. Yes. Um, hey, make sure my <laughs> wife enjoys them because I'm bringing her to them. She doesn't know anybody there when we first go there until I introduce them. So. I do not want Mrs. Arnold to be bored. Um, <laughs> no, the, the events, as you say, they, they, there is a certain sort of um, cycle where, where they sometimes want to do better than the previous year. And at some point, that probably reaches a, a ceiling where you have to kind of ratchet back down a little bit. But... Anything that a client can envision, we can help them get there. And a lot of times it's helping to educate them. You and I talked about this once before. Helping to educate clients on the fact that spending more money isn't necessarily the better way to get to what your vision is. Sometimes there's a way to do it for less money more creatively. And we're all about trying to educate our clients to that fact. Yeah, that's important. You might be able to take one thing away, save quite a few dollars, introduce something else, yep. and still have the same. We uh, talked about that wow factor. The wow factor is really huge at these events, as you know. So. Again, clients have a lot of preconceived notions about what they need to make an event proper, and some of that's because they've been told that in the past by other vendors, or maybe they just haven't had a chance to be educated. But we're always about trying to inform people, let them get a familiarity with the types of equipment we use, and then help educate them so that they gradually, year by year, get themselves a little more acclimated to the type of stuff they need so we can help better advise them and kind of get that wow factor you're talking about. Now, one thing we also talked about was you go into schools, um, ASB, Associated Student Body. I know uh, my daughter was involved in that at Rancho Pico. I was so proud of her as the president uh, several years back yeah. and helped put these events on, and they have a limited budget. And they <laughs> you still work with them. You work with a lot of schools to put on these events. We do. Most of the schools we work with are high schools. We do some junior high dances as well. But a lot of the high schools, the ASB groups at those high schools are very efficient and creative and, and energetic about raising funds throughout the year to then put on these really elaborate dances, whether it's Sadie Hawkins, winter formal, prom, that type of thing. And again, with the schools, the perfect base of future customers to help educate and let them get the most value for their dollar. And it's very fun working with kids because they're very creative, they're very excited, and it's great to work with the leadership at the schools that are, you know, the kids in ASB because they are, you know, as we all know, the future leaders of our business community. So it's always a pleasure for us to go into schools and kind of work with those kids. Yeah, that's good stuff. So um, staging and uh, lighting is a big thing. Sound, video projection, decor, uh, event services. So uh, all very important items. And I wanted to have you on the show because it's something you can provide for a, a minimal budget to a large budget, mm -hmm. to wow your customers, to put on an event, to, to do a fundraiser, to do, to do any kind of those 
of those events you're, you're involved with? We are, and we, we're super lucky in Santa Clarita, and we cover all of Southern California all the way up to San Luis Obispo. So we're up in San Luis all the way down to San Diego for the types of events that we do. But we're really lucky here at home in Santa Clarita where we're based at to be able to work with people. I know one of your guests coming up is Greg Amser from Salt Creek Grill. We work with Greg's and his catering group all the time on events, and it's just a fantastic experience because we have so many vendors and people in this valley that supply services to the nonprofit organizations. There's a great camaraderie here in town among all the companies that get a chance to work with them. So it's really yeah. It's good. great teamwork. Good. good. Um, someone that wants to get more information. Uh, they can go to our website, sosentertainment.com. Should I do the cheesy thing and say the phone number? Probably not. Just <laughs> sosentertainment.com. <laughs> That's the easiest place to access. Do it. Or just add Masterson on can... Google and they'll find out all the information about there you. There you go. Perfect. Thank you very much. We're going to jump to a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to have, you're going to stay on with us, and we're going to have Greg Amser join us from Salt Creek Grill. I want to talk about changes that Greg made in his business to be able to survive these challenging economic times. I think it breaks a little to the left. Uh-uh, to the right. Nope, straight. I told you it was going right. For fun playtime ideas, go online. Just don't stay long. Hi, I'm Dave Caldwell. You're watching SCV TV, the only local television for Santa Clarita. Hey guys. Oh, I've been looking for that. Has Legal seen this? Uh, yeah. Um, sure, what happened to your, um... Oh, yeah, I know. If it gets any worse, I'll have it checked out. Worse? How could it get worse? Yeah, maybe we should call somebody. I'm fine. You wouldn't ignore this. So why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately. Because time lost is brain lost. Welcome back to Out of the Rough. I'm with Greg Amsler. Greg Amsler is a proprietor with Salt Creek Grill. And he's also on the SCV Chamber of Commerce uh, Board of Directors, Hospital Foundation Board. I'm going to keep going, Boys and Girls. <laughs> Foundation and the Michael Hofflin Advisory Board. Correct. So you're very involved. Uh, much of your day is spent on uh, boards and advising and giving back to the community. Well, it, it's, that's the way I was brought up. And my, my family, my father, my mother were both involved. And for me, that's just the way, not only is it, is it personally satisfying, but um, it's, it's the way we do business. Uh, we just get involved in the community. And um, it's, it, it's, a lot, it's a lot of fun. There's a, uh, a little bit of um, personal satisfaction in it too, so it's not just all business and everything else. We uh, we do have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, uh, part of the roots of, of your business is, is charity work. Uh, we're working a lot with Ed uh, with the Chamber of Commerce the last couple of years. One thing I do want to touch upon is your roots, um, because what I think allowed Salt Creek to survive was your roots growing up in the Midwest your work ethic in the Midwest and having over the last two, I mean, you are, you are a high end, you are a, a, a very well established uh, restaurant. Um, and during tough economic times, people think to cut things out and you have to come up with creative ways to be successful. Tell us about your roots. Well, I'm originally from the Midwest. It, it gives me kind of a, a fiscally conservative background. Um, and uh, it, the hardworking um, you know, lifestyle, I guess, is a good way of putting it. Um, whether it's farmers or whether you're in the cities in the Midwest, and, and I, I think we brought that, and, and my partners have brought that also uh, from the Midwest. And it's uh, it's just a way of doing business. Um, we we were hurt like everybody else. And we're on the front lines um, when the stock market crashes and goes down 700 points in a day. Uh, one of the first things that people cut out is we're not going out for business or going out for dinner tonight. Right. It's, uh, so we had to we had to adapt. We had to do something pretty quickly because uh, it all happened so fast. It caught a lot of us by surprise about how deep. Uh, and how f how quickly it, it all happened, and um, it's something that um, we went back to our basics. We just uh, we took a look at at our product. We said, okay, and our product as a restaurant is not only our food and beverage, but it's also our our ambiance, our service, uh, our whole box. And we wanted to the first thing we wanted to do is take a look at what we were doing. What is our product? And let's try to get that as as good a value as you possibly can. And uh, value doesn't just mean 
the cheapest price. Uh, it doesn't mean the biggest portions when you're talking about a restaurant. It's getting uh, the most bang for your buck. We wanted to make sure that people, because people are still spending money, and we wanted to make sure that if they chose us, we would give them uh, the best value for their, for their dollars. And experience. The and best experience, experience. Yeah. if they're going to go for their anniversary or if they're just going to go for a simple dinner, they want that experience. You know, we, we talked uh, with, with Ed about the experience of entertainment. Same thing in a restaurant. You got to have the music, you got to have the vibe, you got to have, the, you know, you brought in, one of the things you did is you brought in jazz mm -hmm. uh, on Sunday mornings, mm -hmm. uh, brunches. Yep. And then you also brought in music at night. Yes, we did. Uh, again, it's, it's the whole package, it's the whole box. When you have a good experience, at nighttime, for example, and, and you enjoyed the jazz, you enjoyed the live entertainment, you enjoyed the dinner, why not come back for lunch? Why not come back for Sunday brunch? And let's keep that going. And that's, that's one of the things that we want to do is get people in the habit of, coven, of coming back. And to do that, you, we, we looked at everything and we said, okay, now that we've gotten our product the way we want it to be, how do we promote it? And with, uh, back then, two or three years ago, we weren't doing a whole lot with the social networking with Facebook, with Twitter, doing a lot of email blasts. We did a little bit of it, but we jumped whole hog into it. You jumped into it. Yes. I, I would get emails from you to talk about girls' night out, which where the ladies can go out and mm -hmm. get a drink and go out with their friends. Um, you've, you had a lot of promotions. You'd promote your Sunday event. You'd promote your, your musicians. You'd also promote your steaks one night. You're, you'd have a special. Uh, I thought that was great because you were reaching out and trying to create value a value for a meal. Each, I think each day of the week you had something going on. Yeah, we call them happenings. We have a different happening each night of the week. Monday night, for example, is, is half price bottle of wine. Any bottle of wine under $100 is half price. That allows people to come in, get a good value, get a very good value that they can, they can either buy their favorite wine that they normally buy at a cheaper price or try that higher end wine uh, at a more economical price. Along with that, they're going to have a nice dinner. They may, uh, by coming in the door, they may remember, you know what, my mother's coming into town next week. Let's make reservations for her coming in. So it keeps your product, your your storefront at the front of people's minds. So let's touch, you touched upon a few things, and, and I want to make this clear for the business owners. You first touched upon the fact that um, you had to become a marketer. You had to become a promoter of your business. But you also had to refine your menu, didn't you? You had to look at your menu. You look at your menu twice a year. In fact, uh, you twice a year tonight Can happens I? to be the rollout of a new menu <laughs> yes, or an enhancement of a menu. You have to look at your menu and make sure the product's great. A absolutely. Uh, you can't just come, uh, and this may be an old school way of thinking, you can't just build a great mo uh, mousetrap or for us have a great steak and just say, hey, come on in. You have to make it, number one, value oriented and make sure you're constantly changing it. We still have a lot of favorites on our, our menu that we've had for 12 years that we've been open. Uh, but we can change a lot of things, bring them back a little lighter fare in the spring and summer, uh, more back to the steaks and some of the heavier fare in the winter. Our dessert menus change, our wine list change, our lunch and dinner menus change. It's all reflected on keeping it fresh, no pun intended, and keeping it new. Uh, you can't just build a better mousetrap and say, this is a good product, come and get it. Yeah. You have to be able to go out there and grab people's attention and get them inside the door. Yeah, you mentioned to me one time, you said, well, Fred, we've got to change the menu. It can't be steak heavy in the summer because people don't want a big old steak in the summer when it's, a, you know, 100 degrees. 105 degrees, degrees exactly. Exactly, right. exactly. <laughs> um, you did make one change in the last um, four, three, four years in the patio, mm -hmm. and that created mm -hmm. great vibe. Tell us about that change that you did and the strategy behind that, I, I know it's a big long-term investment. Yeah, we about, I think it's going to be five years now, uh, we basically doubled, the, actually more, more than doubled the size of our patio. Um, we found out that that was a very popular place to eat at our restaurant and throughout other restaurants in Salt or in SCV. Um, and we were able to put in uh, an outside bar there, um, new tables, new chairs, uh, multiple TVs, new sound system to create an entirely different, like you said, vibe, an entirely di different atmosphere experience 
by eating outside, people watching. Uh, we put we installed misters, so it's a little cooler in the summer. We have heaters; we can enclose it in the winter. Um, special and, events. And special events. We can, and we just, in fact, we just had one last night. We can rent out the entire patio for wedding receptions, uh, different uh, corporate events. You can use the patio uh, to do presentations. You can hook up uh, slideshows, um, QuickBooks to our TVs. I've done and a speech at the patio. Yes, you have. Yes, yes you for have. a lunch, a luncheon. And it was very good. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So you've got different <laughs> regions of of your restaurant, and I think that's what one of the things that keeps Salt Creek fresh. You can there's a there's a dining room in mm -hmm. the back, private dining room, right? Yeah. There's a bar, mm -hmm. uh, a really nice one. There's the patio with the bar, and you could rent that out. And then there's the dining the dining, dining room rooms, in yep. itself, um, and I think that's helped keep everything fresh at, at Salt Creek Grill. Um, we're going to jump to a quick break, but I'd like to keep keep the two of you for the next segment. And I want to talk about charities and how you can grow your business out here in the Santa Clarita Valley by being associated with different nonprofit groups. So we're going to be jump to a quick break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 